Greetings everyone, and Great here for another Age of Fires 3 replay. So on the bottom right side is the Red Ethiopian, so CEO of Spear Fighting. Up on top left side is the Blue Swedes, who have Kinda Cat. And something I just realized as well, I have meant to do this, you may or may not realize, but the trade up here is a little bit... Uh... Not... Usable... There we go. Now that is below the chat window. That should make it a little bit more visible. My apology, I just recently realized that. Ooh, Capybara. Had to give him a good head pat. When it comes to natives on the map, we do have the Sudanese, which can give you access to Sudanese Dervish, as well as some mercenary, the Askari, and the Sanar horsemen. Over here, we do have the Yorbara, which can give you access to the Yorbara Oro Lugionary and the Oro Esso Rider. You know, if you ever think I'm an expert pronunciation of anything, don't. I'm horrible pronouncing anything, so if you ever hear me butcher a word, just assume that's just me. I wasn't really paying attention to the chat, probably because I was busy doing something on my stream. Speaking of which, uh... Disable the preview to save some resources. Since this game is, I'm pretty sure, 32-bit, you have to make sure you save as much processing power on the single core that that's it's running on. We do now have a deck for the... Uh... What am I thinking? Osua player. We got Eskaya. Is that supposed to be Ascari? I think that may be this, but misspelled. Uh, I could be mistaken though. We got Villagers, Hasua Kingdom, Pukali Code. Oh yeah, really don't trust my pronunciations. Uh, Wood Coin Influence, Lani Archers, Raiders. I'm going to off. <coughs> so recovering from Bug. And Cavalry Hit Points. Hmm. Uh, Palace of Mina, Spice Trade, Gasanaki, can't pronounce any word. Yorbara Allies, uh, Jukuwana, Influence, Rando Indigo Production, Livid Knights, Photo Tactics, Counter Cavalry Tactics, Falani Archer Combat, uh, Sahali Sahelian Kingdoms, Sua Skewers, Influence, Infinite Livid Knights, and Drabar Parade. And for the Swedes, we got Blueberries, Settlers, Zalak Hardwoods, Woodwood, Eichmann, Azars, and Combat, and Hit Point, Team House of Bernadette, Trinity of Road, Roadkill, yes, I'm gonna go with that, Spice Trade, Yagalon Allies, Coin, Infinite Blackberries, Pikemen, the Kalarian Rebellion, all your pikemen transformed to halberdiers. Haven't seen that one before. Balkanets, Advanced Frontier Defenses, Gamari Castle. That's a unique castle car. Ships a mighty fort to your town. Allows you to construct mighty fort. Uh, finding nearby forts now calls you a horror. Uh, oh, an experience or a bounty. So you get the Aztec War Chief for on your forts. Team Mortars. So then I have a mortar card in H4. That seems about right for a number of mortars in H4. Factory, factory, uh, civil lifeguard, great northern forest. And something to note as well, the blackberries do not combo with blueberries. University going on up. And over here, I got a Song Kai, which can give him, give him access to the Raider Big Button. Which is different than the Raider Little Button, because that costs a little bit more resources to spawn out individual ones, I believe. Up there, Greenery here. Greenery's course are free. There's H up, there's the Camp Builder. And it's gonna build our war camp here, so maybe I'm for a bit of aggression there. 
Or maybe just trying to keep this trading post secure. We've got Torps. Swedes tend to go for a large amount of Torps. As a bit of an eco boom to say the least. Also Mina there, which can be used to put next to university to get extra influence generation. He's also close enough to the town center here as well. Raiders are rolling. And does have the raider button there as well. I wonder. Oh yeah, click on it just brings the town center. He may combine this with the raider's big button here. So he may go for like a 10 raider attack. Sunni's oh Sunni's uh red tray has been completed. So he has actually gotten a Sunni's ally. Which does give him access to the Sunni's red trade. It's two red sea wagons. Maybe research twice. It has been researched zero times. And those two sea wagons. Oh. Let's just village just killing off some fauna. Or I think deployed out these two barracks there. We got the big button now being selected on in. And a shipment for Lonnie Archers. So we're going to see a good amount of raiders and archers on the field. So it looks like there's eight raiders on the field. That is quite a significant amount. Blues Explorer does spot all the raiders, which is a good idea to go for some Carolins. Carolins do bonus damage against heavy cap at range, not in melee. But still, heavy infantry would be very useful against the raiders. <clears throat> a number of pikemen, that's not bad against raiders as well. Big pointy sticks are useful against horses. Hunting dogs now being researched. More pikemen. Oh, maybe someone have a pikemen for the rebellion card here, which is not rebellion. That's a revolt. Rebellion is different than revolt. Let's leave it at that. More pikemen being killed on the field, which is very interesting to say the least. He's going to have extra siege damage. Flani archers will be a good counter. They're light infantry. Their damage multipliers are not the same as skirmishers, but do have the increased attack speed. So imagine they also have, compared to crossbows, they have higher damage multiplier by plus 50%. They also have, also have one more range. Their base damage compared to crossbows. Crossbows have what? 18 base damage or 16. So they may have higher DPS than crossbows as well. They're also much more expensive than crossbows, costing 105 as opposed to 80. So yeah, treat these guys as better than crossbows. <coughs> so we got a quite a large number of pikemen advancing along the flanks. It's 20 there, which they have really good siege damage. Raiders do also have decent siege damage for a heavy horseman. That is one pop. Uh, okay. Recover the war, uh, explorer. Villagers do have 20% melee resist. So they can take a little bit beating from pikemen. Church improvements. Treaty of, of the roadkill. Oh, we got this, uh, Torpid Axel next to a bit of, a uh, wood, but not next to, uh, huh. Wait a second. A majority of these Torps are not next to Coin. Only a small group of them. Actually, about seven in total. So, he is going to eye of a great northern fortress, or forest, with his Torps. That's interesting. So, he has a plan for cutting all the wood with these, uh... Orbs. They'll provide a great amount, but they provide a amount. <clears throat> they also, he's been pushing some of the huntables near them to start collecting up from with the torps as well. So he's playing a bit more strategic with his torps than standard just mass spam torps around coin mines. I like to see something different like that. War pikemen, exile prince. Influence. He's going for his own Sudanese uh, Red Sea uh, trade. And you can always go for the uh, local forces, which is a great cheap uh, research in order to get out some mercenaries. 
go you put the sewer player have to pay they still have to pay a uh, coin for those uh mercenaries let's see yes they do have to pay influence for those mercenaries well the what's it called uh swede has to pay coin Another uh, raiders rolling on in, and more raiders being pulled out. Both the big button and the small button. Trading post and watchtower being pulled out there from the Red Sea trade. Got this force before. These torts will be quickly torched. It's in their name. Oh, I just realized. New Eisenberg Iron Works as a shipment as well. So he is not eyeing for Dominions or Eisen Iron Works. Thank you. What do you think about the Swede's composition or deck? It is different. And now I do have the uh, the Carlian Rebellion, which will turn all these pikemen into halberdiers, which could be very good. But there's a good number of Flony archers here. We've got a number of legionaries, which are heavy infantry. He's going to lose those barracks, does have a stable here. Goes for some Hazars, a small number of them could help engage the Flani Archers. It'll be a bit more difficult to engage, but they would, of course, do reasonably well with the Raiders. Going for more Hazars, not bad. These villagers, of course, need to be inside the town center. And here comes Halvadiers, they do move slower than Pikemen. Here comes the Pikemen. Villagers not being hit, he's just letting the Raiders Torch the town center. Hazars are connecting the Flani archers. Trying to stop now these Hazars. Halberdiers pushing the way forward. They are dead in Halberdiers. Starting to connect. They have good amount of bulk to them. Good. Oh, and now got some church shipments. I wasn't paying attention. Now got the Gustavian guards. All the Halberdiers are. Uh, appear to be the same. No, I think they have more melee resist. They have the same amount of health. And it appears to be the same amount of damage. But they do connect there. He did, of course, get a good shipment, which ambushed on top of those archers. Great engagement there. Now the Halberdiers can counterattack. Uh, it looks like the movement speed is actually slightly faster. Going from 4.25 to 4.5. And I think their melee resist is a little bit higher. I don't know. The big, Of course, it got a good number from the church improvement, but I'm not exactly sure what else it did improve. I think the overall improvements are small. It's just simply the nice little ambush spawn. Should we forward? Oh, I've got idea to skip the war camp. Could be important taking out with the Flani archers. We've got some dervishes here, which are not going to be super useful. Oh, they actually are light infantry, which actually will be useful. I hit the Flani archers. Or torch down the stuff. Lonely archers are engage. Got some hussars there. That should be used to engage the dervishes. And these halberdiers will quickly torch down the town center as well. Some more of the flying archers being picked on off. We got some more flying archers back there. And everything I see is light infantry. So the hussars just need to keep everything that's infantry. War Hazards being streamed on in. Falcon has been flown in. There goes the town center. Villagers now getting ripped apart. More Flani archers there from backline war camp. Oh, these cows are fat. Does sell off on the cattle there. We got some levy bowmen. He's getting desperate by bringing the levies. He has a little bit of influence bringing on in. Villagers. Getting ripped apart. He's losing a good number. He has lost town center. Down to 22 villagers. Points up 27 and has corps. And all of these villagers are getting ripped apart. This is a slaughter. Yep, that's going to be game. Down to 10 villagers. Nowhere enough wood to get rebuilt town center. Pals can be useful getting the town center again, but there goes that structure whatever it was to the falconets a couple of raiders over here <clears throat> oh. 
Gonna try to save his Falcon Nuts. Blue has assumed has to protect his Falcon Nuts at any cost. But at this point in time, with our cast of know-how, we just know the who's who plus out. There's some villagers. That's literally what the rest of his villagers right there. Oh, very, very well played there by Blue. This angry saying thank you for watching and on to the next replay.